What have we gotten ourselves into, guys? I'm actually disappointed. We're, we're still missing some Glenn Levitt. Welcome to Curiosity Public. I'm Dutch. <laughs> Jules here. Dylan. Oh, Dylan's here. Couldn't see him. Oh. <laughs> Well, I get you a box. <laughs> Do we have one? Uh, yeah, you can stand on that uh, 25 year old box. You can box. probably stand on a bunch of these. Oh, ones. yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Well, welcome to. Welcome. Either to the, the insanity. Either the greatest idea we've ever had or the worst idea we've ever had. Glen Sanity. Um, but this is the ultimate Glen Livet drink through. That's right. Another one of our world famous drink through episodes where we're going to try to drink. All of the Glenlivet bottles. Here. <laughs> Not, I mean, we're gonna taste them all. We should, we should specify. And how many do we have? I didn't even count. Is it fourteen? Sure. I don't know. How oh, many? Counting live. Fourteen bottles. Um, Lucky fourteen. Now there are some other one-offs. There's some other bottlings that we don't actually have here, but I think we have most of them, and even some that don't exist anymore. Um, like the old school 18 year old that we all really liked. Mm -hmm. Don't try this at home. Don't try this ever. Don't don't try it at a bar either. We're trained professionals. So I will say this is an academic experience for me because, you know, this is actually more for me. I see this in stores. I have to like write notes and say, well, what which one's which? Yeah. What should I buy for this occasion? I sometimes forget what it tasted like. So I'm trying to get this on uh, on tape here. So we're recording this on tape, on a VHS tape, mm -hmm. and upscaling it to digital. Um, but anyway, if you guys are new to the channel and you saw all this Glen Livet and you wanted to watch us, first of all, welcome. Hit that subscribe button. If you like any of our shirts, which you can't see over these boxes, you can pick these up in our shirt shop down below. We've also got a membership program where we do exclusive videos and early access to videos, and it's just a great way to support the channel by clicking the join button down below. But let's talk Glen Livet, guys. Now we've done a number of blinds with scotches. We've done a couple of them. For sure. And Glen Livet has won both of them. Both, I think we did an 18 year old yeah. scotch blind and a 12 year old 12. scotch blind. And Shocking. It, and it won both of them. Shocking. But we tried to, you know, we were gonna do a drink through and I think we had like six or seven and Dylan's like, no, 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 let's get more. <laughs> Dylan, you And then we got like the Annie. seven or eight and then we were gonna film this yesterday and Dylan's like, no, we gotta go get more. And we went to the store and we bought like five more <laughs> bottles. <laughs> so. It's gotta be complete or as complete as we can make it. We gotta put in the effort. And so I, I don't like to do things half fast. You should beat that, please. Um, he said but. Uh, but uh, yeah, I um, but, uh, I think this is, you know, this is a good Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. This is going to be a rough Tuesday, but let's, let's, first of all, let's just talk about what we got and we're going to talk about the price we paid for each of these or the price you can find all these. And then we're going to get them out of the boxes and then we're going to start going through them. So first off, we got the regular 12 year old uh, scotch clocks in at around $29. Mm. Then we've got the special release 12 year old first fill sherry, which will clock in around about $10 more, 38, 39 bucks. Then we get into the Founders Reserve, thirty-two fifty. The Caribbean or Caribbean, also around the same price, around mm -hmm. thirty-three bucks. Then you got the fourteen-year-old, which will be around forty-six, forty-seven-ish, maybe a little more. Then the fifteen, which you'll find around sixty bucks. Then we're going to get into the eighteen-year-old, the newer release, eighteen-year-old, the lower proof one, which they've started to put out. I've seen it anywhere from ninety to like one ten, one twenty. Mm. The old version of the 18, the little higher proof one that won our competition before, a little more expensive, like 120 to 140, mm -hmm. not around anymore, but it's still out there on shelves. You can still track it down sometimes. The dark box. All right, the 21 year old, you'll see it in the two to 250 price range. The special release there, the 14 year old single cask, those, the, there's different ones for different regions, mm -hmm. but they, I think they're all around the same price, 330, 340. Then the 25, the most pricey of them all, $400. I think we were actually able to get it on sale for closer to 350. And then down on the end, we've put the high proof guys, some of the higher proof ones, um, which the two of those are the Nadura. Those are the, um, the Nadura. There's a peated and an Oloroso one. They're both around $80. And then finally, a secondary bottler, a signatory, of Glenlivet, which is around 150 bucks. So we've kind of organized these in range of price. proof and, and price. price, proof and price. And so logical order. And logical order. Like and actually, I'm thinking, degree. I think that this guy's a cask strength. Check the proof on that. We might mm. actually have to move him after the 25 because mm. we want to kind of have the highest proof ones at the end. What's our proof point? Uh, 61.2%. So that should probably so, go yeah. swap those two, maybe. 122. Yeah, that's a better order. Okay. 
Well guys, we got a lot of boxes to open up here, so let's just get it done real quick. Ready? Let's go. <laughs> now we're back. <laughs> All right, look at that. What, a, what an awesome. This looks better than in the boxes, I think. Of course. Mm. Look at this. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Anybody right. want to come over? Yeah, we need some help with this one, guys. <laughs> All right, let's uh, kick things off with the 12 year. You don't have a glass? Oh, Dylan had my glass. Yeah. Well, the great thing about this wall of scotch is you guys can't see how much I spilled back here. <laughs> but at least this time I, I spilled the cheapest one as opposed yeah. to spilling the most expensive one. <laughs> So the 12 year old, this is their double oak is what they call it. Um, again, a, an award winner, an under $40 12 year old single malt scotch that you can find pretty much anywhere. Very, very, very pleasant aroma. It's nice. I mean, you gotta love it. No rough edges. It's sweet. Let's, let's start describing the uh, flavor profile. What fruits do you get? I get a little bit of like a pear almost on this. Mm -hmm. I get like a lot of pear. Yeah, almost like a strawberry too in there. Definitely a pear. I get apple. Yeah. Do you get a pen? And uh, a little bit Only of pineapple. Uh, a little... <laughs> you know, when this comes out in 2026, no one's gonna care. Um, <laughs> that I... was like five years <laughs> old, anyway. Uh, <laughs> there's a little bit of the peach. Uh, yes, on little... the palate more. Yeah. Would you say there's a lot of jam? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say there's not no. much jam. I think it's, it's ripe. very it's ripe. Ripe fresh fruit. Ripe fresh fruit. Yeah. Summer fruit. Stone fruit. Um, not much in stew, but you're getting a hint of it maybe, yeah. a little bit. Mm. Very enjoyable. Crisp, fresh, refreshing. But guys, we have 13 more to go, <laughs> so we can't spend a ton of time. Let's keep going. Okay, guys, the 12-year-old first fill now. Now, Dylan, you got this one. I should have showed the, the other bottles, but this is a little more unique, so I'll show the first fill. So you're gonna probably have a little bit more barrel influence with this, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think it was an academic purchase, meaning that, um, you know, I, I really wanted to just compare it with the 12 year, right? The 12 year double oak right. versus a first fill. Um, you know, for folks who do not drink that much scotch, some argue that the first fill uh, provides more robust flavors, but could be a little bit more caustic. Whereas refill, bill, uh, refill barrels uh, tend to be a little bit more mellow but the flavors may not be so bold or forward. Um, I personally love both, but I tend to get a lot of first, first fill. fill. You love yeah. your first fill. Right. How about the color? It's beautiful. I mean, but I don't think there's any statement from Glenlivet about not using coloring. Mm -hmm. So can we put too much stock in the color? So nothing official, huh? I get peach on mm -hmm. this. Do you guys get peach? Yeah. But compared to the 12 year double, hmm. what do you think about the flavor? I haven't tried it yet. I'm trying to see if there's any statement on here about. So we're at 43.2 percent, which I think is a little bit higher too. The I think not oak. as bright. The double oak is I 40. And I think I'm getting more of like the stewed profile. Um, I feel like the complexity is dialed down just a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. A little bit more of the stew component We're is breaking through. There's and some yet, spice coming in. A little bit of spice, but. But I feel like the double oak provided mm. more different. Um, I think a broad this, fla uh, flavor experience. Yeah, and I think it's actually more approachable. I mean, it's lower proof. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'm getting a ton more with the with the first fill. Yeah. I'm getting more spice. I'm not getting more sweetness. <sighs> I f again, I feel like I the know. number of fruits that you can identify has narrowed. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I yeah. feel like the ones that are left it punches a little bit more, yeah. but if you're into kind of a more sweeter, I think um, I think this could open up though. You know, if we mm. let this sit for five minutes, it might. Some it's of that, been open for a while. The bottle's been open, but I'm in the pour. I mean, mm. even just letting the pour open up for a few more minutes, I think we'd probably get a little more sure. sweetness. But it's definitely, I agree, it's it's a different kind of sweetness, and and that spice to me is what's really overwhelming my palate a bit more. All right, which one would you pick? The twelve double or first? I'd save double. the 10 bucks and get the double, personally. Same, double. I picked a double. Okay, so we already have our first bombshell, guys. There you go. Let's keep going and get some more bombshells. <laughs> okay, guys, Founders Reserve. Um, this is a non-age stated iteration. 
And it's we're back down to 40% now. We went up there for the first fill. And it is uh, American oak. So it's a first fill American oak cask. So I'm guessing bourbon barrels. Bourbon, Use bourbon American yeah. whiskey, Tennessee whiskey. An, an uh, unopened bottle here, we should point out. Mm-hmm. Well, we're not uh, we're not grading it, so yeah, we're just giving our reactions. Love that sound. <laughs> we're third bottle in, and uh, Dutch is getting worse. It's gonna get worse. It's <laughs> gonna get worse as time goes by. Right now. <laughs> oh, it's a four hundred dollar bottle. Oh, what? <laughs> four hundred on the table. <laughs> Whoa, uh, very, right, different, very different notes. Yeah. How, how so? Uh, I'm getting that char coming through, I think, from the bourbon barrels. Mm-hmm. More oak. More oak. More it's oak. a it's a sweet oak. There's an earthy component. Do you get that? Yes. Yeah, there's a, a, it's extremely a, a earthy. I would say the 12 year more fruit and bright summer fruits, whereas this one is, is starting to get hearty. This is, a yeah. cut, this is cut grass, man. There's definitely earthiness, but I'm getting a deep rich sweetness in there like a really like a molasses level not not overly sweet but a dark sweet like that mm. Mm. interesting let's try the palate mm. i get a touch of prune um a little bit tannic a little bit yeah a little a bit of the date maybe the raisin um you start getting the raisin Mouth, i agree with feel, you uh, it's more dry i think too I very agree. dry i think that's yeah. because of the tannic the yeah. oak yeah, yeah the oak, oak. it's you quite can... tannic yeah, yeah. More on the palate more on the palate interesting I think, finish is really short for me. I think if you really like barrel influence and you really want to know what the barrel can do to a scotch, mm. especially a, a bourbon barrel, that's what you're getting with this. It's not quite as it's it's a little rougher feeling to me than the than the than the twelve years. What do you yeah. guys think? So and we're to, we're this might lower... be the case when you need to let it. <laughs> so, I agree. This one it might that. open up a bit, but. So there are other companies where you're, you, you know, and, and I think Glenn Levitt does it too, where you mix American and some, you know, French or sherry or whatever. I mean, you get all these kind of mixtures and uh, you get a different flavor profile depending on the permutation. This is a pure, I think, uh, a pure representation of what the American oak can do, um, but it's definitely much more wood. A lot of wood. I think that the sweetness could develop as this bottle All sits, but I still think that tannic oak component is going to be there. Yeah. And I think if you like that kind of thing, like if you like at the level that it's in, in like an old Forester 1920, right? Mm. You get a good amount of oak and a little bit of tannic. You're, you're getting a kind of a similar thing here. So if you really like that kind of oak hit in a, in a whiskey, maybe this is the one for you. For me, I think out of these three... I'm still going back to this 12 here. It's just so <laughs> pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. I think it provides a the best bang for the buck still. Um, I think the founder is more academic to me than like uh, in terms of a – or it doesn't excel in drinkability. Agreed. Right? I mean for us, I think it's – this is something you're... It's something to learn. It's something to to kind of taste what Glenlivet looks, t- tastes like. I think it could it could pair... It could stand up to food maybe a little bit better, like a more mm. intense food experience. So hmm. it could be one to experiment with the pairing. Yeah. I still go back to the 12, I agree. Yeah, I agree. So I haven't, I haven't really left the 12-year double oak yet. Okay. Let's get to the Caribbean, guys. All right, guys. Going to the Caribbean... And the, the Caribbean, the Caribbean Reserve is uh, they use bottles that se- selectively, selectively finished in barrels that held Caribbean rum. So the Caribbean one is that has Caribbean rum in it. Mm. Mm. You guys got that? Got it. Caribbean and Caribbean. Car- Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we're only three in. You can't be getting that dumb yet. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> I started that one. <laughs> All right, so let's see what some rum cask influence has. Would you guys guess more sweet or more funk? Tropical calling, man. My my expectation is... Well, Caribbean uh, rums aren't My expectation is banana and pineapple. I'm waiting for that. What do you think? The aroma. Plantain. Hmm. There's a tropical note. But it's not robust. Mm -mm. It's not overpowering. It it kind of meshes nicely with the... Yeah. The scotch. I thought it would be a little bit more forward, but it's not. It's not. It's very subtle. Do you think it would open up? you think if we let this glass sit for 20 minutes, it would... Uh, I think so. Get a little sweeter on the nose? I think so. It's nice. It's subtle. Very pleasant. 
Not not really get much, getting much of uh, wood. Not as sweet though, even as the 12 year, I think. And is that just because this bottle's been open longer maybe? No, maybe. no. You don't think so? No, the double, double oak consistently you know, had that kind of really rich, sweet aroma. And I think this is more, it's a little bit more subdued from uh, um, compared to the original 12 year double. But, but it's it nice. adds the nice. the slight um, kind of uh, banana, pineapple, maybe mm. a little bit of coconut. Oh, it's super delicate on the palate. I think I like this a lot. What's our proof oh, point? Wow. We, uh, 40? 40 percent. Get a close up here. Mm. The mouthfeel is different. It's um, the mouthfeel is different. There's no caustic edge. It, it is so different than the founders. Yeah, completely different. Every yeah. aspect of it, the nose and the palate. Mm. How? You got to describe it. Well, okay. So the um, I could taste the oak with the founders. I could taste that earthiness. Right. This is almost a completely different profile. It's it's very clean. It's very crisp. It's not quite as fruity, honestly. I think as the as the double oak. Yeah. But it's very tasty. There's some flavors in there that I want to feel them develop. I feel like a, a little bit higher proof of this would have been better. This is a surprise mm. to me because I've had rum finished. Uh, scotches in the past that's not from Glenlivet and it tends to be a little bit more punchy and in your face in terms of the rum mm. influence this is very subtle it's and very and subtle. it's a uh, restrained is the best description and I my expectation was this you know I was like oh you know I'm gonna get the usual rum type of thing I'm not getting that much at all no, it's, it's subtle. just a very subtle like a, a underlying kind of reminder it's a it's a subtle reminder that this is not just the regular Glenlivet. Agreed. But then added to that, I find that the harsh edges of the younger uh, whiskeys have been just rounded out a little bit too. I agree with I, that. I, I, the mouth feel it, the mouth feel is the thing that like stood out to me. Yes, it's very different. It's nice. It's soft. I uh, this is maybe a close second to me to the double oak. Yeah, I, I would like agree it. with that. Yeah, yeah pleasant surprise. Pl I'd pleasant say. surprise. You feel like you're in the Caribbean? Tropic calling, man. All right, let's move on, guys. I think it'll get a lot better. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm too. getting it on the finish. I'm, I'm getting a little bit more of that tropical fruit oh, yeah. coming up on the finish. You guys get that? Yeah, yeah. the finish is much better, <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like, than the founders, right? Uh, better across the board than the founders, I think. All right, guys, we're getting back to age stated now with the 14-year-old. Uh, this is selectively finished in cognac casks for a rich, mm. intense flavor. We're also still at 40%. They've got kind of a purple motif there. Great looking bottles. Yeah. Um, this is another one that is unopened still. So I would say take whatever we say and then think that the flavors could open up a bit with some time, but this is our first reaction. Incredible, not even a spill. Oh, maybe never mind. I think that was from before. <laughs> that may have been. I, I like this bottle. Yeah, I like too. that purple. Oh, looks good. As a nose. Smelling the age. Uh, everything has been oh. taken up a notch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, the volume ha is up, rich. Mm. The grape uh, component is much more forward. Yeah, that cognac is coming. The cognac finish is coming through. Right at the end, it's the dates, the peach, and then... But it's it's well balanced. You know, sometimes you can get that cognac finish and it can be almost overpowering. For sure. It's It's... Well balanced on the nose. I think this is where I'm getting consistent stewed fruits. Yeah, it's pretty mm. subtle to me. I don't know. Mm -mm. It's there, but it's subtle. Hmm. The mouthfeel is um, it's pretty good. It's mm. mellow. It's mellow. Oh wow! Very complex. Much more. A lot of flavors going on here. You're getting that influence. I'm getting a little bit of that tannic residual thing in there. Do you guys get that? I agree with you. Yeah. Well, the, the wood is back. The wood is the back. front, it's really fruity for me, and then you get the wood. Yes, the, uh, it's late, late, late in the palate, yeah. for sure. What do you think about the finish? It's. I get a lot of the wood on the finish. Me too. Yeah. Almost too much. Yeah. Um, it's a slow fade. Yeah, it's it's an interesting. I mean, it's got a long finish, but yeah. I feel like the less desirable flavor characteristics yeah. are hitting me more at the end. The longer it goes. Yeah. My question is: Does the cognac enhance Glenlivet, the the kind of the original distillate? What does it do to the original distillate when you finish it with cognac? It it kind of changes the fruits that you get. Yeah. Like I'm not getting the pear at all. It's all shifted to the grape and the dark fruit, and maybe like a maybe like a plum. Mm. It's kind of morphed into. I think for the me. overall experience, though, it's been like uh, the brightness is 
keeps getting turned down. Right. So yeah. the way it's darker, the way yeah, it's darker, yeah, it gets darker, darker. Yeah. yeah. So it's the way I look at it is, you know, you have you can have raw fruit profile, and so I'll just kind of explain what I usually think about. You get the raw fruit. Would this be straight talk with Dylan? No. Okay. This is uh, like you get the raw fruit, then you get the ripe. Only his fruit. arm is straight. Yeah, right. the ripe fruit. <laughs> then you get almost like rotting fruit. Then you get the stewed fruits. Then you get like the preserves, the jam, right? And then you know you get kind of that kind of spectrum. Earlier, it was more on the side of the raw fruits, and then now it's kind of shifting more toward the the cooked. The sugary aspects of the flavor profile is coming through, I think, a little bit more. Yeah. But here's the thing. I think the cognac subdues some of the stewed fruits and replaces it with more grape. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. It just, to me, it just changes the profile of the fruit. Like, I talk about the bright yeah, fruits, the, like the, the crisp apple, yeah. the brighter flavors, like the citrusy flavors versus the kind of the darker flavors, like a, like a plum, and then getting into that molasses type of thing where it's just... Like a muscovado sugar versus a refined sugar. Like sure. the darker sweet versus the lighter sweet. I think that's where I, this is starting to turn more dark. Right? Yeah. Is this uh, better or worse than any of the other? This is like the moment of temptation that Luke Skywalker had mm. when the Emperor was trying to tempt him. Okay. hasn't completely gone there, but it's, it's t- testing the waters. Yeah, Thinking about I, it. I still feel like we're kind of in this limbo. And it's, a, it's still another academic release. Yeah, it doesn't feel yeah. like a finished thought you know yeah yeah it's good it's good though it's good it's very good um i think if you're a big cognac fan and you're only i mean it's 45 to 50 dollars you're not breaking the bank necessarily for a 14 year old age stated scotch i still think you're gonna feel satisfied with it but is it worth that premium over some of these cheaper ones i don't know yeah i i think if you are looking for sweet just like that sherry sweet influence this would not be your jam it's not sweet enough you would still go back fall back to the 12 year even though this is aged more i think you still get that over there and you get satisfied over there like who would buy this though i think that if you because it's a 14 year right so they're putting an age there and yet they put a cognac so like what's the demographic who's who who's gonna buy this well i think if you like seeing that age statement i think this one will also continue to open quite a bit and i think you'll get more of the sweet I think it's a price point thing. At around 40 to 50 bucks, getting a 14-year-old age stated with this depth of flavor, it may not be perfect, but it's excellent, I think, still, especially considering the, in the price. Mm. I think it's a price point thing. I think it's a price point. Oh, I think point. It's, a, it's a connoisseur thing. I think they're the ones who are going to want to try these different expressions. So it's, it's, it's academic. It's academic. Yeah. Yeah. I think the mouthfeel is elevated. I agree with that. But yeah. not necessarily the flavor. Well, let's see how things go with the 15. Okay, guys, 15. All right. Bumping up the age statement. The 15-year-old is a French oak reserve, selectively finished in limousine oak, limousine, to give a perfect nutty spiciness to the fruity Glenlivet style. Nice looking bottle, look at that. Got kind of a reddish motif with this one, almost Mm -hmm. like a maroon. Yeah. 15-year-old. And again, for a 15-year-old scotch, 60 bucks. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Think about the Glendronach. So what's your expectation? It's French oak. You know, it, it, it means things. It's supposed yeah. to be sweeter. Well, butter. Caramel, butter butter mouthfeel. The mouthfeel is different than, you know, uh, the other types of oak. Let's see. Oh, wow. Okay. Whoa. Uh, the, uh, the aroma is intense. Much more. Oh, yeah. Miles above the 14-year. Now, see, here you're getting oak without the tannic. And you're getting fruit. I agree. I can't oh. quite put my finger on the fruit. There's almost a... There's grape. Are you getting any kind no. of like banana in there? No banana. No banana. It's grape, dates, raisin. Mm-hmm. Date, that's what it is. Peach. There's a whole range. Apple. But all of this is cranked up and it's stewed to jams. Now I can I can finally uh, nose the jam in this. Hmm. Oh, that's there, that's well, nice. Well, there's the mouthfeel, right? The French oak mouthfeel mm. that you can get. Which is yes. essentially oh. very, very soft, uh, no edges to it. An even uh, coat. The butter. Butter. Um, which sometimes, depending on the release, is not so great, but not bad here. 40%, 80 So most of these have been 40%. The only one that was higher was what, the 12 first fill? 
Finish is much better. I get a little bit of that tannic come through on the finish again but, at the very end. But I think it's better. I agree. It's, it's less like an oak tannic and more like a grape tannic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Less it's very harsh subtle. edges. It's really subtle. I think relative to the 12 year double oak, the mouthfeel, the finish, no harsh edges. This is a great one if people want to describe scotch as smooth, right? Mm. You know, people like to call yeah. it smooth. 60 I think bucks. This could be 60 bucks. As, 60 bucks. As that. It's buttery. A buttery um, mouthfeel. Buttery. Uh, this is probably my leader of the pack at this point. You would pick this over the 12 year double? I would. It's a more mm. elevated experience. I'd like to have both of them on my shelf. Mm. You um, do lose the crisp apple with this. Yes. It it kind of goes into the background. But I think you gain so much with that mouthfeel and with the amount of barrel that you're getting here and the length of the finish. There's more flavor components. I think all of that, that's why I would rate this a little higher. I, I actually think like the profile is enhanced here because I, I still get a lot of the brightness. I mean, it's it there, may not but be there's apple, a lot of other things coming There's a lot it. of other things yeah. though, yeah. Which is not a bad but it's thing. it's an actual enhancement, I feel, compared to the other ones. I guess the only thing would be... So did you just look at this and say enhance? Yes. Enhance. Enhance focus. <laughs> the only cr criticism I could probably add to this particular release, the 15 year, is if you do not like the mouthfeel of the French oak, True. it is prominent. Very. So if you want uh, kind of crisp, clean edged expressions, this is probably not your jam. And you'd probably just fall back again to the 12 year yeah. uh, double oak. But um, but yeah, I would agree at this point, if, I, if you force me to choose, I'd pick this one. Okay. I think it's miles above better or miles better. Wow. Mo better. <laughs> it's much better than the 14 year. To me, anyway. I agree. I would definitely say it's worth the extra 10 bucks. Mm. Less than 10 bucks. Uh, 10 bucks. 15 bucks over the 14. So far, the standout. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Let's get even older. Okay. So the first of the two 18-year-olds we're going to get into is the new version. This guy right here, which is the... They've dropped the proof down to... Uh, back down to 40%. So, I mean... Same proof as everything up to this point, except for this uh, first fill. The old version, as we mentioned, is a higher proof, 43%. Um, I don't know if there's any other differences, but we will be tasting them side by side, so it should be pretty interesting, or back to back. Uh, this is the uh, matured in Scotland batch reserve. There's no specific information on cask, um, on the labeling, but mm. uh, good looking bottle. What do you think about the new Blue. bottle redesigned? Compared to the old. Let's do a little side by side. Mm -hmm. I actually think I like the new one a little bit better. Yeah. So this is new. This is old. I think it looks it looks cool. I mean, I get know. rid of the paper. departure from the label. I'm okay with that. I think this looks. Uh, it shows the off bottom. the color, which it may does. be mm -hmm. a modified color for all we know. Well, I want to take this opportunity to do a uh, straight talk with Dylan. <laughs> When when they announced this, I was livid. I was angry. And were you perturbed? Uh, no, I was I was really upset because number one, I felt like the marketing tried to hide the fact that they were lowering the proof from a forty three percent down to forty. Um, they were they did lower the price. But if you weren't really paying attention, mm -hmm. you'd say, oh, wow, that's a better bottle. You know, it looks better. And yet you're getting slightly less. And so I refused to buy it. In fact, <laughs> when we were doing this drink through, I was going to keep it out of the lineup. But then Dutch said, no, we have to do this because this is how they're going to release it from now on. And then another disclosure, uh, when they announced this, I went and bought the old, the old version um, and I have several backups just in case. Well, I want to say the, the the language that they use is quite pretty interesting. So on the old mm. version, they say it's a it says conviction that only the best would do and was acclaimed as the highest assurance of quality. Elegant, complex oak and fruit, an enticing bittersweet symphony. Whereas the nomenclature on the new one says sublime and complex, an enticing whiskey of outstanding balance and flavor. Mm. So no longer a symphony. <laughs> <laughs> symphony of destruction. All right. Nose. Mm, very good. Very good. Very good. Still a best symphony. Nose, best nose so yeah. far. Absolutely. I mean, uh, it, you know what it is? It's, it's this 15 with a bit more of this bright fruit. Right. Yeah. 
It's um, almost exactly the, that. The French oak, like the uh, aroma f- profile is gone. It's very crisp. Oh, I like the nose a lot. You get you get not only the stewed and rich jam, you get the bright fruits and you get it back in yeah. the uh, in the nose. All right, palate, guys. That's really nice. The mouthfeel is good. Uh, I think it's um, you get you start to get that velvety mm. uh, mouthfeel. It's all bright fruit on the finish. The finish I, I like is that. I'm getting long. a ton of grape. It's lots good. of grape. grape. Like, I was gonna say it's like it's like I drank uh, like a white grape juice, yeah. and it's just like that's what the finish tastes grape. like. Yeah. Not very much oak. Mm-mm. It's clean. I like I like the fact that it's very very straightforward, clean. A little bit drying. Are you yeah, that? drying. Or is it's that just the dry. fact that we've had like. Yeah, no, <laughs> I think it's a little dry. And the finish is, um, it's kind of quick mm. for me. I, know. I had different experiences on, on, on multiple sips. I mean, like one, I got a lot of that white grape. Mm-hmm. The second one, I got, I've noticed more of the mouth drying yeah, than anything else. But Yeah. Do you think it's a standout? Mm. I mean, I we're a significant, if I'm not factoring in price, this is the one out of all these that I would prefer to drink right. so far. Uh, you know, when they did the redesign and they lower the proof, they lower the price. You can get this uh, new 18 year around 80 to 90 dollars uh, sometimes on 90, sale. 90, I think, is about the cheapest I've seen at 89. 89, 99. Yeah, but with a coupon. Okay, yeah. okay. Which again, I mean, it's it's again the 15 was what? What do we say? 60 bucks. Yeah. So 30 buck improvement. Maybe. Mm, I would still. Pay that because I would too. I think it's worth this it. This is, I, I mean, think, this is if you if you have if you can't spend a hundred bucks, this is a great you know yeah. this is a great alternative. But if you are spending a hundred dollars, mm. you know, I would say between the two, obviously this is good. Is it thirty dollars better? Uh, I think it's a little hard to compare because of the French oak part. Yeah, um, I am a little biased. I I tend to move away from it if if it's too heavily influenced. Um, because I, I'm i not actually the biggest fan of that mouthfeel, mm. which is just very um, – too much butter, too much yeah. soft flavors. Um, I like a little bit of the bold punch. Now, I do a want little. you to – please do not throw that away. We should or, keep it. Or keep it because we need to uh, – Compare. We need to compare it. Okay. Well, let's get another glass and let's New try glasses. the uh, full version. All right. So uh, we're going to keep our glass of the old 18. We've all put little blue stickers on it. So we can tell them apart. And let's try the old 18. Did I say the wrong thing? New 18. New 18. New 18 has the blue. Correct. Old 18 is going to be in a clean glass. Not really clean. Clear. Em- empty. <laughs> See, it's the way you line them up. You put them in a, in a, in like a straight line. <laughs> I try line. to do it so that you, know, you don't do it. They need to be like this. I see. Right. Even for a computer? That's literally like behind the scenes because nobody can see it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's just a lake. Yeah, I There's an 18-year-old whiskey back here. Yeah, I need to wipe this. Up. I got it. It smells good. It smells good, but... Yeah. Okay, guys. So, um, old 18. We got three percentage points higher on the proof. So... It's also been open a lot longer. Okay, we just cracked open the new one, so... Hmm. Don't admit a face. Mm. Oh man! I mean, they're they're different. They're really different. The this old is, this is not is so this much is not brighter, something dude. that it has a more bottle depth. can is that for. is that just the proof though, or is that more than just the well, proof? It's, it's, it's you have to. Well, I mean, the it's proof part is of that part presentation. Of yeah. Proof is part of that presentation. It's part of that experience. You have to accept that presentation. Oh my god! I mean, it's just I mean, the company brighter. This is a true symphony. Yeah, right. The the company consciously decided that. The presentation of, of their 18-year-old the was going to be at 40%. The old school one, they decided that they wanted to present it at 43%. You have to respect mm. that. I it's also... A, it's a similar flavor profile. I would say that. It's just... It's it's, it's, it's more defined. It's more defined. It's, like, it's easier I'm to pick up all the different up things. a lot more things. It's not just great. But it's, but it's similar. I would still call it similar in profile. I don't know. You this are, feels this feels more sophisticated, man. I'm getting even like a tobacco scent I wasn't getting before. Uh, it's very like similar. It's really, I think it's very similar. It's just everything's better in the in the old one. Yeah, more clearly defined, easier to pick out the fruits. The the fruit mm. the the grape is not the only thing I'm yeah, getting. Yeah, it's not I'm the only dominant flavor. More of the kind of hidden flavors. It's not as that, drying on my mouth though. I agree with that too. Yeah. So let me ask. 
First, which one's better? Old. Y yeah, no question. The old. the old version is. But uh, now, is it thirty to forty dollars better? Because remember, the price did change. Uh, mm. Yes, I do think it is. Not much more than that, but it is better. It is better. It's it's objectively better, and and I think it's mostly the proof. I, that's my reading of it. They, they, mm. the, the the profiles are pretty similar, mm -hmm. and I think if if we were able to like bump the proof up of the new one, I think it would be very similar. It might even be exactly the okay, same. Okay, but that's not as helpful. What is it exactly <laughs> that came with the extra proof? That you feel everything I said more clearly defined flavors. Uh, everything kind of works together better. Like there were certain flavors that you could pick up better at the eighty proof, like the grape, but it, that was predominated everything. Whereas at the slightly higher proof, some of the oak that's in there, some of the other fruit components, they pop a little bit more mm -hmm. and they balance that grape out a little bit better for me. And the finish I thought was a little bit better. Yeah, the old eighteen mm -hmm. to me it maintains kind of that stewed and jammed flavor profile, and the lower proof and this presentation uh, thins it out a little bit and then what happens is that the stew just start, starts to become more of the ripe fruit flavor profile mm -hmm. so it starts moving that way and so to preserve kind of the um what you're paying for in the 18 year you want you want that rich flavor right you're 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 longing for uh very very like you said defined flavors right. i want to pick out the fruits i want to be able to identify it the old expression you could do it easier Right? Yeah. Um, the newer expression, it's there and you kind of feel like it's there, but it's a little harder. Would you agree? Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Mm. I think it's it's still a good expression, both uh, the, even the new one. Um, it's just kind of sad that the that it was better. Yeah. It was better and they decided to change it, which, you know, hey, maybe it's a price point thing. Yeah. And I think if you pay 90 bucks for the new 18, you're, you're not going to feel let down necessarily. I think it's still a good dram. It's just... It's unfortunate that you used to be able to pay a little bit more and get what I think is definitely a better product. Yeah, I hope our you know our viewers you know months back when I said please go grab this, I hope they. Uh, I hope they did, yeah. <laughs> yeah because because it's going to be disappearing, guys. We gave oh, everybody, we gave a, everybody we gave a, heads a up. musical analogy real quick. Stick some sucker to marketing. I think the uh, older eighteen is like you know listening to a concert at uh, so for the West Coast people like the Walt Disney Concert Hall. Versus the new one is like at the Hollywood Bowl. So mm. for you East Coast folk, this would be like Carnegie Hall. And this is like at Madison Square Garden. Okay, let's move on, guys, to the 21-year-old. <laughs> All right, guys, 21-year-old Glenn Livett. So we're getting into some serious price here. We're at the $200 to $250 range. Wow, very cool-looking bottle. Now, this is a special release, is that right? This is the Archive. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the box has, um, the archive. Well, the, actually, I don't have the box. You have the box. The box has like numbers and, you know, release numbers and all that kind of stuff. This says batch number 1219R. Hmm. You have the box? Release? I think that's the one, yeah. Right here. Oh, that's what Dutch just read. Yeah. <laughs> Does not have anything. <laughs> I'm trying not to spill, guys. Yeah, please don't. Spill. I spilled a little bit. Oh, I should use my uh, my pour spout. The broken the one. The broken, <laughs> it broke an antler. But no, you know what? Here. I I worry about that because I don't know if it's tainted inside, right? I rinsed it out. The... <coughs> uh. All right. All right. Let's All right. see. Twenty-one, guys. Twenty-one. How's the nose? The best way to describe it is wow. Yes, that is the best way. Uh, apple. Yeah, I would agree. Apple first, then, and then I, um, the grape. This is a fruit salad, dude. There's yeah, but man, apple's wonderful. There's a there's almost that French oak note coming through because there's some barrel here. Oh, this oh, is, this is a like a fruit salad because I got this like a so mix pleasant. of apple. But you know, grape. somebody sprinkled a little bit of cinnamon. There's like on the an fruit orange salad. thing. Yeah, it, yeah, but not like a lot. A, not a, a lot. Bit. Just a hint. It's, it's yeah. right underneath all that. Mm -hmm. Some brown sugar. Yeah. No ethanol hit. None. None. Yeah. No burn. Oh, that oh, is rich, rich. Wow, let's taste it, guys. Mm. A slight mm. bite, oh, dude. That, a slight bite. The the finish. The finish is awesome. Oh, okay, a little tannic, a little drying. Yeah, not but much though. Not as not as much ton, as the eighteen. A ton of fruit flavor. Yeah, this is all the fruit that you got in this 
12 year, all the fruit that we were getting in the 15 and the, uh, yeah, the 15, all the stuff we got, even in the Caribbean, I feel like, even though there's no rum cask here, yeah, all the fruit that we got in 18, everything is there. And it is, uh, it's like that added apple thing, apple cinnamon. Uh, it's really nice. This is a perfect example of if somebody wanted to know what a good finish is like, I think this is a, a good example. Why did you do air quotes? I have no idea. Because it's not good? It's good. No, it's really good. I think the, the finish, I agree with you. There's a little bit of the wood. Yeah. Um, it gets a little tannic on the finish, a little drying. Expected for a 21 year. Mm. Uh, the question is, is it $100 more than the 18 year? Mm. Right? That's the big question. I, I or even more than that now with the original, the, the new release. Yeah, I understand it. Because I do think, I mean, you're, you've added three more years, a lot of flavor. You added three proof points over the new version. Yeah. <sighs> but then I compare it to like uh, the, the Glendronach 21, which is around the same price, 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that kind of tracks for a scotch, 21-year-old scotch. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's out of bounds. But, you know, the thing is with Glenlivet, I feel like it, it, down here you're in bargain range. Mm -hmm. Now that we've right. crossed over 18 years old, now it's priced kind of like the other scotch. Can it compete? I kind of think mm -hmm. this could, yeah. yeah. I think it's good. For a connoisseur, I think this is where it kind of ends, right? I mean, like, I, I don't think they would be purchasing the 18 I agree. anyway. Yeah. Um, You're I think, in a different level of scotch drinker when you get here anyway. Right. So I think the price point is this understandable. Is, this is when you, yeah. But, but it would be amazing if they could price this at, like, closer to 140, 150. True. I, I, this is where you start to min-max, so you know, like get rid of the box. really, yeah. really focus so on the minutia. That's, that's the question. What if they do the same thing with this 21 as they did with 18? What if they drop it down to 80 proof and they drop the price down by 40 bucks, 50 bucks? I guess Dylan you would will be get, livid. Livid. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd have to go and start <laughs> stocking up again. But I, I would say that uh, this is where you've... This is the first time I can... Mm, it's the fall off. Uh, it's evolving too, guys. Try again. Yeah, I mean, yeah the, this the is the first time up. I could uh, appreciate the finish, right? I think you get hints of it on the 18, and it's not yeah. bad, but this is where you get that long, rounded, rich flavor all the way to the end. The interesting thing is that when I just tasted it now, after it's been opening up for a few minutes longer, uh, I, the dark fruits are starting to come through a little bit more. Mm. In addition to that apple, in addition to the grape, you're getting a little more of that on this taste. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's I interesting. Get, like, I get more of the dark fruits in the finish, which was completely but that's missing what I'm saying, in the 18th. As it, as it opens up, that comes a little bit forward in the palate. Okay, so yeah. please don't get rid of this glass because we have to compare it to the 25. We really do. Okay. And Because I, I have a question for you. Um, and this is something that has been posed to kind of the Scotch community for a, for, for a while now. Um, and I'd like to get your thoughts on it. All right, let's get to it, guys. Okay, 25 year old. Pass nice. that on down. The most expensive bottle on the table, which means I'm going to spill. Not drop. Um, it does have a wax seal. Um, we've already cracked into this one, obviously. What a beautiful bottle. Uh, what's our proof point here? 43, so the same as mm. the 20. So we've all kept our 21. Six glasses and we've put a little red sticker on it so we can tell it apart so it will be interesting to see like what is four years and uh what two hundred dollars yeah. yeah to a scotch and what is this uh scotch question it's been lingering so well Good let's try yet. it first right. and then i'll ask you the question that was expert pour, guys. That was pretty well good. Done, Cheers to that. Well Not done. a drop wasted. Oh, wait. Oh, don't do that to me, man. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> no, <you got> <laughs> we should share this. Uh, name your Does favorite uh, Whoopi Goldberg movie. Eddie. Sister Act. <laughs> I was waiting for Eddie. What was yours? I was going to say Eddie, too. Oh. But then he said it first. <laughs> I was like, dang it. All right. Uh, what else? Oh, gosh. Name? Star Trek. <laughs> Generations. You know what's weird? We drank this kind of on its own, yeah. and it was very different than drinking it while comparing it, right? Yeah. Very, very different. Oh, man, the baking spice comes through on the nose. Oh, the progression. Yeah. The progression, right? Everything is intensified. Oh, the finish. Hmm. 
No. Um, hmm. Shocking part of this, oh. you would think that the older age, the tannic, the oak would be much like, you know, much more forward. Like, I was going to say the same thing. It's not. It's not. Yeah. They, they took it out. I think oh, it's, it's craftsmanship. Uh, there's a spice component here. Like a baking spice. I don't mean like a peppery spice, like a like a cinnamon nutmeg kind of thing. Mm. Uh, rich Christmas spice almost that's coming in here, added to all the fruit. And I think that's almost what's masking the, the oak and the, the barrel influence. It's accentuating everything. For the me. finish is more defined. So yep. the, the jam and the stewed, I would say more stewed fruit than the jam. Because there's not like an overwhelming amount of sugar, white sugar, or even like brown sugar. Mm. It's not that. Um, but what they did was they balanced it. They balanced yeah. it really well. Mm. And then that balance continues to the end. It's now, excellent. Now here's the question. Which one is better? Well, I gotta and the try. reason, the, oh, okay. I gotta try the 21 again here. 25 is better. Okay. Which one? Hmm. Oh, it's just, it's more velvety for me. And and no none of that tannic hit. I got the tannic hit again on I the twenty one. I think I might like the twenty one. Mm, that's interesting. So this is what the, are you? Uh, <laughs> I didn't think that I would say this, but I think the twenty five is miles better. I I would agree with that. Yeah. So here's the thing that's happening in the community. Um, there's been debates about whether the twenty one is better than the twenty five, and vice versa. And there's this kind of movement that feel the 21 is actually the better, better spirit. Mm. Prior to this drink through, what? I was actually in that camp. Well, because Jules is. Yeah, because I, I thought, you know, I've had the 21 a couple of times. And I, obviously, I've had these other ones in different scenarios. But when I when I taste through this... Hats off because it's it's a very nice logical progression. It is, and the twenty five is miles better. Mm. Well, wait I, a second though. Uh, I, mm. I'm starting to understand that point of view though. Like two hundred dollars better. <laughs> I didn't say two hundred dollars better. It, I agree with you that it's better. But if I'm looking at these things on the shelves and mm. I'm saying, okay, this one's priced at two hundred bucks, this one's priced at four hundred bucks. I don't know that it's that much better that I'm willing to spend four hundred dollars on it though. No, I do think it's better. I do think it's better, not on the initial flavor. Well, I agree. Uh, I'm not paying but for I think, it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I think I think the finish and the presentation of the finish is extremely unique, and it's something that the 21 could not provide. The way I, I look at this is like I, I'm looking for unique offerings from a distillery, and is there something if if I thought that the 21 had even a slight presentation of that finish in a way that 25 did, I would say, no, it's not worth that extra, you know, whatever that cost is, it's probably not worth it. But here, 25 is providing me with something that is very different in that the robust, punchy flavors right at the beginning is still at the end. In fact, I can still taste it, which the 21, I have to say, there were... Rough edges, yeah. relatively speaking. I mean, yeah. obviously, miles better than the 18. The 21 is there. I think it fits a flavor profile and mm -hmm. a price point. But, wow, the 25, I got to say. It is better. I agree it is better. You. I agree. It you. is better. Yeah. But Jules doesn't agree. Yeah. Why? Why do you think the 21 year is better than the 25? I want to know. I want to know what component of this presentation you feel is superior. Well, I just well, guys, we got to move on. We got a lot to get through. So let's get to some of the high proof stuff. All right, guys. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I think you're putting words in my mouth. I said it's better, and it is actually miles better. But the question is, is it two hundred dollars better? Is two hundred miles? You said better? yes. You said yes. Actually, in no. Dutch, pose that question. Well, I think okay. <laughs> I think it's not two hundred dollars better, but I, I think would agree. I think maybe it's a hundred dollars better. A hundred dollars better. I agree with you. Yeah. I so I'll, I just want to make sure I clarify. Okay. Who cares? Let's move on to some high proof, guys. Dylan, this is what you're here for. This is um, why I'm here. Now we originally put that 14 year old single cask, but as I'm thinking about it, that would be probably more interesting to have back to back with the signatory. Mm -hmm. So why don't we move that right before the signatory and let's jump into the uh, which one's that one? The Nadura Oloroso. So this is uh, their natural, that's what Nadura means in Gaelic. And this is bottled at cask strength and it is matured in first fill Oloroso Sherry. So we're gonna be most similar to this, which is first fill also. 
Maybe. Maybe, but it's a much higher proof here with the Nadura. This one clocks in at 60.1% alcohol. Ooh. I like this line. I mean, it's a cool concept. They're basically trying to say, hey, look, we can do cast strength too. Yeah, I mean, Glenlivet, they do experiment. I mean, they have the Enigma line, right? They have the... Um, Edward. Uh, or the, uh, the Mystery line, right, rather? And I cracked into this on one of our live streams. I think it was a solo live. So I don't think you guys have had this, huh? I have not. Very interested to see Whoa. what you guys think. There's an alcohol burn. It's high proof. I mean, we're 60%, 120. Mm -hmm. I disagree with that. I disagree. There's a little bit, it's but the thing is the, the sherry actually hits me first. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of sherry. There's almost like a... Uh, I'll wait to hear what you guys think. Hmm. Very pleasant. I agree with the sherry. Hang More on. peach. Great. You almost get like a citrus component mm -hmm. behind everything. I, do. I don't know if it's that's like just a, the proof reading is citrus mm, for some reason, but like a, a little bit of a little kind bit of, of citrus cherry tangerine. Yes, yeah, that's what tangerine. Yeah. yeah, you're right. But like a set more sour. Mm -hmm. Oh, that palate. Oh. Hmm. Whoa. Oh wow. Jam. Yeah. Jam. Wow. A little bit drying. I don't know if that's just the proof. Or the uh, 12 bottles we drank before this one, but... Mm, no, jam, white sugar. Yes. Um, okay, but we have, to, we have to describe this within the context of the lineup. So where does this fit? Uh, where does this fit? It's a different flavor profile. Really this is a sherry... This tastes like a Glendronach. Like, uh, it doesn't taste like a Glenlivet to me. So I like this wow. because I think it's the elevated version of that 12-year. This? In that... Um, much better. It's a it's a narrow, a, relatively speaking, a narrower bandwidth in terms of the types of fruits. You don't yeah. get some of the yeah. kind of the bright summer fruits that you got in the original double double oak. But once again, it's cranked up much higher. Mm. It's definitely an elevated uh, presentation compared to the twelve year. I would completely skip the twelve year. Um, the first if you have scroll. access to this, yeah, this is well. Because think about it. it, I mean, the the twelve year is forty bucks. This is about twice as expensive at eighty. You're getting a much higher proof point. I think. But it's, I, think I think it's, it's totally I worth th it. I think it's twice. It's more than twice as good. Twice experience. Yeah, I would agree with that. So it is a cask strength. I'm gonna put a little bit of water in it just to see Ugh. if it changes. Wait, wait, wait. Anything. Do you want the pipette? Because you want to be. Um, Scientific? Consistent, right? Calibrated by Dylan. See, look at that. It is Curiosity Publix. Oh, you gotta bring it down to 50, please. So I can Thank I you. can use this now. Oh sh <sighs> the wrong button. How do I put it back on? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Th that's how you take it off. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Alright. Here, I suggest you do the same. <laughs> or you're welcome to do the same. I know you will. I mean, it's a cask strength. I mean, I think we owe it to see what this tastes like and maybe a closer proof to some of these. That's what I. That's why I'm doing it because it's scientific. And I know that if Dylan were a man of science, he would do this as well, but he's not really. He just says he is. I, w I will say I completely disagree with this. Um, I think you should, you should enjoy it the way that the distiller presented the bottle. If they wanted to present it with water oh, in it, the they would dilute it. Hmm. I get more prune on the nose. And the the tangerine is almost gone for me. It's weird. Like... Weird. Wait, so is it better? No, not on the nose. There Let me see how the palate is. No, no, it's just different. I'm getting like raspberry on the nose. It's weird. Oh, the palate might... Mm. Oh, it's like a symphony. Everything's blended together a little bit more now. Oh, no, man. It's this better. enhanced the palate. It did a little bit. I think you're right. Yeah. Mm. I'm well, enjoying this. What is, that is good. Yeah. It made it like a like mm. a fruit compote. Yeah. You know, like everything's mixed together now. Mm -hmm. And it's this delicious, mm. like, s cooked fruit. But then you get, you know, and like, they left, like, with chunks still inside. Yes. You know, so yeah. then you'll get, like, a burst of something. Yeah. Like, I'll That's get, actually, like, a burst of apple. I do think it improved of, the palate yeah. slightly. I think it diminished the nose a little bit. Mm. Um we're trying, but obviously Dylan won't do it. So takeaway on the Nadura, a nice addition to the lineup. I completely think it is. It's it's fantastic. I agree with it. Um, always disappointing when the uh, age statement goes away. Agreed. But 
what they put in it is impressive Agreed. for the price. All right, let's keep going, guys, with the next Nadura. Okay, guys, the Nadura peated. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Had to stop it. <laughs> uh, so this is, again, another one of the natural ones. Uh, the other thing we should point out is that these are uh, uh, no, non chill filtered, both of the Naduras. Mm -hmm. This one is finished in heavily peated whiskey casks, which is interesting. It's finished in a peated whiskey cask. So it's not that this whiskey's been more heavily peated. In other words, they didn't use more peat when they were drying it. Peated it's just that they, they took a cask that held a very heavily peated scotch, I'm assuming, mm. and dumped this whiskey in it. So interesting, a very light color. Yeah. Um, I I'm pretty sure that the Nadura line doesn't use any coloring either. And we're okay with that. Please, just right, keep it more natural. Of this, more of keep this. Keep it natural. Um, the proof point, I should point out, is 61.5. So we are up even a little bit higher. Oh, this is unopened. <laughs> Uh, if, a, little, a little bit higher even than the uh, the other Nadura. Mm. Is this our highest proof that? of all of them? This was 60.1, 60. so yeah. Uh, the um, signatory is 63.4. Mm. And the 14? Is 61.2. Okay. So almost exactly the same as this, a little bit lower. So for our viewers, when we say... Yeah, no color. Yeah. Look at that. Very golden... Almost like a grape juice, like I, a white grape juice. I think it's beautiful. I, I do too. Like I it. have no problem with light colored scotch. Mm. It's hard to get that. the peat actually. <laughs> Very no. subtle. No, it's, oh, it's there. there. It's Very there. subtle. There's no, that briny, mm -hmm. earthy vegetal peat. It's not smoky. I think that's the difference here. It's not, you don't get any of the smoke, but you're getting the essence of the peat. Yeah. You know? Oh, okay. It's like peaty without smoky. But it, it's there. The phenol. Uh, you know, it's, it's much more prominent on the palate, I think. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Right? Compared to the nose. Oh, yeah. Hooey. It's there. <coughs> mm. Yeah. This is a very tough one because who is this for? This is for the Ardbeg lover that walks mm. into a Glenlivet bar. Why would you get this, though? You would get No, Ardbeg. you walk into a bar that only has Glenlivet, and you're like, I love Ardbeg. Oh, okay, I'll have the yeah, Nadura. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I feel like people... Wow. People... Um, but no, I, buy Glenlivet because they want that sherry. They want that sweetness. They the want, side. yeah. They're yeah. not looking for peat, and then all Here's of a the sudden peat. they're giving their version of it. I think um, it's an interesting thing if you're a peat lover. It's an it now you have a Glenlivet that you would be interested in trying. Yeah. So if nothing else sure. for that, again, academic. Yeah. Is I is it more that. peat or is it just smoke? No, it's mm. it's it's. I get a lot of peat, and there's a little bit of smoke on the end mm. for me. I'm thinking more smoke. I mean, than it's peat. hard to dissociate sometimes peat and smoke. I mean, you can have smokiness without peatiness. On the nose, I was getting peatiness almost without the smokiness, and on the palate, I'm getting a little bit of both. Mm. If that makes sense. I feel like the balance is not as great as I would like. I agree. Why don't you grab the the dropper? I'm going to put a little bit of water and see if it changes anything. I, you know, for our viewers, there are releases out there where the peat. Um, just, help yeah. accentuate the core flavor profile uh, in such a way that it just really um, elevates the release, uh, elevates the presentation. I feel like this misses the mark a little bit. It's still interesting, I will say, um, but uh, it's it's hard for me to argue that this is going to be... Mm. This oh, should be on go. my shelf, though. This enhanced the nose significantly. <laughs> How so, though? It's not... It removes uh, that peat. More fruit. There's more of the fruit component fruit popping out through. now. Yeah. I don't know. I think so. <laughs> just diluted it. You guys check the palate. Mm. Right? I don't know. I subtle, just... subtle change. Uh, I think all it did was lighten up the peat. Yeah, and it enhanced the fruit a little bit yeah. for me. Well, not uh, for me on the nose, but not on the palate. You know what this is like? This is like if you wanted to take the maybe like the 21 or the 25 year old and add an element of peat and smoke to it. Why would you do that? I agree. I feel like you would move away from Glenlivet. I agree. There are a lot of... I don't see where it fits, but that's just what it tastes like to me. There I, are a lot of Isla releases. But right? hey, by the, by the same token, like adding that much sherry, is that that's kind of different too. I mean, with the other Nadura. I mean, I think both of these are extremely academic. I think if you love a sherry bomb, you need to try the Nadura sherry. If you love peaty scotch, you, you need to try the, the, the Nadura 
uh, Pete. Yeah, basically Glenn Livett's version. It's their experimentation. Right. I mean, it's cool, but it, it doesn't really have a place in the rest of the line. But think about the price, though. 80 bucks is not crazy. Yeah, but you can get... For a cask strength? Yeah, but you can get, like, legitimate, you know, peated... I hey, love yeah, you know what we should do? Exactly what we, we should define, take. Where if you're a Glenn Livett fan, though, and you wanted to try. Let's try something in the yeah. future. Maybe we'll do this. Let's take um, some $80 Sherry Bombs and we'll throw the Nadura in there. Let's take some $80 Peat Bombs and throw the Nadura Peat in there. And let's see how it does. I think that's a good idea. Okay. I think that's a good idea. For me right now, um, in the lineup, I think the value comes from the Oloroso Matured. Between the Naduras? I agree. I think that's the better expression. It, it fits this flavor profile better. Yeah, it, the progression is nice. Yeah, it, it, it could be in this lineup and wouldn't feel as yeah, out of this place. is kind of... It's an like, outlier. Yeah, yeah, like right here. All right, guys, let's keep going. Two more to get to. Let's try the single cask 14-year-old Sherry Butt. This is, again, one of the limited release ones they did. Uh, there were different ones in different regions. This is the one that hit the West Coast. It was 14-year-old Sherry Butt, 61.2%. Quite expensive, uh, $340, $350. Sherry Butt. You know, we had this a while back, and we had it, we tasted it alone, right? It was a kind of a single tasting. Yeah, it was a one-off. I don't think we ever released that video. Maybe we'll oh, throw okay. some footage. <laughs> footage, footage, footage. Footage? Footage? Maybe we'll throw some footage. <sighs> Footage, footage in. Come on, we've had 15 glasses here at this point, guys. <laughs> and it's only been two hours. I like how the number keeps changing, too. But um, <laughs> I remember being maybe a little bit underwhelmed with it when we tried it fresh open. Now, now this bottle's been sitting for probably six, seven months with a little bit of air in it. So let's see if it's changed. <laughs> it's not underwhelming. Oh, my God. So <laughs> I, I, I have, all I have to say is wine grape. No. I, I'm chewing on that that wine no. grape skin. No, this is apple cider, dude. With apple. This is apple it's cider. It's apple, it's grape. No, it's apple cider, guys. I completely oh disagree. I think it's like grape. A melon. It's an apple cider. There's I a get a little of, bit of the apple. A little bit of fig. You're getting the sherry influence a lot. Ugh, the peach. This the is nectar. A, this is a Glendronic level nose. I mean, you're at a much higher proof, but man, this is a fantastic oh, nose. Wow. Okay. What a progression. What a progression. You get the you get the You get the sherry. You get uh, a lot of the flavors that you got in the Nadura, Oloroso Sherry. But then I would say relatively speaking, this is very rough and this is not refined or balanced. This is like the age dated version. This is yeah. this is the balanced, and then on top of that you add the finish. Wow. Well what's crazy to me is like the other 14 year old, this guy, mm. uh, just complete. I mean, I, the proof, I think, is what's just so different. I mean, you're at such a higher proof point. The flavors are so much more intense, but no rough edge. You don't taste the proof, mm. you don't smell the proof. Mm. It's just all intensity, and it's delicious. All right, so this is a note to myself. Okay, here's the difference. The Get your micro year, cassette recorder out. The 25 year is still the king future. in terms of the finish. Um, this one still is lacking, relatively speaking. Uh, flavor, the upfront flavors, though, um, it's it's getting there. It's uh, it's pretty good. I think the the extra high proof makes up for kind of the shortcomings, and so it starts to get up there in terms of the beginning. But at the end and the finish, um, this can't compete because you lose it. it. It starts to become a little bit more chaotic. Uh, can't beat this one. Can't beat the 25, or I don't think it even beats the 21. So you wouldn't even go for this because of the proof? Because <laughs> I'm talking price here. Yeah, but I mean, it's okay, so it's in between the price of the 21 and the 25. You don't think it's worth it just because of how high proof you're getting? Man, the finish in the 25 is so unique. The yeah. finish in the 25 is unique. It is something I, that is missing. I would say it's individual specific. Like if you're a typical scotch drinker, Versus a typical more like a bourbon drinker. Mm. Bourbon drinkers tend to really love the high proof. Scotch drinkers. Up front. Up front. Up front. Scotch drinkers are kind of more maybe ambivalent a little bit. It's like it's more about the flavor. Mm. So I think if you're coming at this from more of an American whiskey perspective, I think you might jump to this one. If you're more of a traditional scotch drinker, you're going to go for the 21 or the 25. Yeah. I think if you're chasing after that finish, the beautiful finish, uh, sometimes elusive, yeah. well-balanced, rounded finish... Um, this is where you're gonna you're gonna go. All right, guys, let's keep this in the glass and let's try the signatory. 
Okay, guys, so we've put a yellow sticker on our um, 14-year-old cask strength. Pass that signatory down. Tell us a little bit about this, Dylan, as I pour. Yeah, so uh, in scotch and in um, in uh, these kind of whiskeys outside of the United States, sometimes there are independent bottlers who source uh, liquors from different distilleries. It is not like a barrel pick per se. They will sometimes buy like tons of barrels and and blend it themselves. Sometimes they will release a single barrel. Um, sometimes they will uh, keep the barrel at the distillery and then buy it at a certain age. Sometimes they'll take it out of the country and then age it in different places. Um, they might take it out of the country or keep it in the country and then finish it in different ways. Um, most so this of these- is, This is a first fill, Sherry Bud. Right. 13 years old, so it's a year younger mm -hmm. than the one we just tasted, the 14-year-old. Right. Also, Sherry, mm -hmm. how different do you think it's going to be? Now, the oh, price point, about uh, half the price, we should mm -hmm. point that out, of the of the Glen Limit stated one. Yeah. Can you look at the look at the color, though? It's beautiful. I think... Um... Beautiful. Look at that color. So this is the signatory, and for comparison, oh. it is a little darker than the... Um, the Glenlivet one. Yeah. Now, the Glenlivet one doesn't say it's first fill specifically. So this is no. uh, clocking in at 63.4%. Higher proof. Uh, bottle number 117 of 586. Cask 900281. How's the nose? Elegant. Darker. Really dark. Very yeah. sherry. No, no uh, ethanol, though. No, but yeah. it's all prune. Which is shocking, fig, fig, which is shocking yeah. for such a young... Young release. 13. Here I'm getting dates. 13 year and at 63 point, you're not getting any ethanol. Come on. You dates. gotta give that, you gotta give dates. that. Oh, come on. Try it. Oh my God, look at the legs. Mm -hmm. What about the flavor? It's intense. It's um, intense. It's, it's dark sugar. This is Muscovado sugar. There's date, there's prune, there's fig. Right. Dark fruit. The apple is not there. The baking spice is maybe in there very subtly. The finish I'm is. Like, that's like really rich for me. The finish is very. It's very rich. You're yeah. right. It's like a syrupy dessert. Yeah, mm -hmm. syrupy. No, no bright fruits. No, no, no uh, uncooked or uh, raw fruits at all. Let's do a side by side. No, it's like the custard in a pecan pie. It's like that rich. <laughs> oh, this is dark fruit. This is light fruit. This is richer. More flavor on the signatory. The, the signatory. More, more the signatory. flavor on the signatory, but different. I would agree. The flavor profile is not. They're both really nice noses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like really nice. Like the sugar's really coming through for yeah. you now. Yeah. Me too. I'm both. Oh, it's so like pleasant. It's so middle. pleasant. Okay. Palette. Hmm. Different experience. I would agree. Both excellent. I would say. Mm. I say if you like the darker fruit flavors, signatory. If you like a little bit more of the apple. Lighter fruit flavors, you're going to go for the Glenlivet one. Mm -hmm. Now, price point taking into effect here, I have to go with the signatory. It's $150. Yeah. Right? And I I brought this up in one of our other videos. One, you know, one of the reasons why I, I explore a lot of scotches. And then if I really like one distillery, I'll start looking at the independent bottlers' uh, versions of it mm -hmm. because I'm I'm always looking for uh, kind of a, an extreme expression of that distillery, and oftentimes I can find it in these. So for folks who have never seen stuff like this, um, you know, essentially this is Glenlivet, except they just went and like picked, kind of picked the ones yeah. that they wanted, and then they figured out how they wanted to release it. There are older versions of first fill Glenlivets out there as well. But I brought this because I thought for the price point and the kind of flavor profile you get, I think it's a nice balance. I'll say this, the, is that the the signatory, I might, I could give it an edge based on price, but to me, the it tastes less like a Glenlivet than the Glenlivet cask strength, the 14 year. That one retains a little bit more of this core profile. Mm -hmm. And I kind of understand now why they would have maybe sold those barrels and said, okay, <sighs> they don't quite have this core profile. They're really good. Yeah. It's a departure put, though. Do them under from, signatory. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, it, it makes sense to me. Yeah. I, I think for folks who've been drinking a lot of scotch for, for many, many, many years, we're always looking for the kind of the new thing, right? Yeah. You, you want to be you want to be wowed in a, in a different way. I mean, it's just it's, it's the same old. You know, a lot of the times you, it's it's okay. It's it's a lot more aged, therefore it's more expensive. Do I really want that on the? If you want that kind of 
punch in terms of the dark fruits, this is an amazing that's, experience. That's the way to get it yeah. for sure. Yeah. All right, guys, let's get a little bit of a recap. Okay, guys, recap time. Our biggest drink through ever. Um, this you was feeling it? Uh, no, it's I'm, actually, it was nice. It was fun. It was very pleasant. It yeah. made sense. Uh, I'm going to enjoy <laughs> sipping on these two last ones here a little bit as we, as we talk about our recap. Me too. Let's start this off with the hardest question, which is you can only pick one. Now, that has to come, encompass everything. Price, mm -hmm. flavor, mm -hmm. everything. So, Dylan, what's your one pick? Oh, very simple. This is 25. It's the 25 because now I am, my eyes are open, uh, finally. And uh, I realize that it is the finish that you're paying for. And it is something that is very unique. Um, you drink a lot of different types of expressions, um, different distilleries and, and offerings. Uh, finish is always tricky. It's a tricky beast. Uh, and sometimes it, it's really messed up in a lot of these releases. They did it really well. And, and I think that's the craftsmanship. I'm always looking for that craftsmanship. I'm yeah. very, very, very focused on that. This is a great example. 25, no question. Jules. 21. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I really enjoyed this. And, I, you know, I know this is going to be controversial. I actually enjoyed it, I think, more than the 25. It maintain, it retains a lot of the Glenlivet profile. Uh, and you're not really breaking your wallet just to get it. You know, it is still pricey, but still, I mean, quite enjoyable. I mean, you get a lot of that, that apple, citrus, the bright fruit on there. And the finish was still pleasurable. All right, I'm going to Kobayashi Maru this and basically say that since I usually hang out with you guys when I'm drinking good scotch, I would take those two and then the only other one I would add to it would be this guy right here. <laughs> Whoa. This okay. is an incredible offering. Yeah. As yeah. I'm going through all of this, I'm thinking level. back. I'm thinking the back value. The value that you uh, get, the flavors that you get in this bottle and for 30 bucks, under 30 bucks sometimes, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't think we can leave this out. We can't forget where we started here. Right. We can't forget how good this is, how much fruit you get. It's the and building how, block. And how everything builds on it. So I, I would actually pick all three of these that you guys picked. Um, I mean, I really liked the the 14 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's talk a little bit more about this whole experience and, mm -hmm. and kind of talk about, you know, Closing thoughts, basically. I mean, I, I'll start since I kind of started, which was basically sure. like the way this builds is incredible for me. These feel a little bit experimental in a lot of ways. Mm. The ones that really hit it for me were the age stated 12, either one of the 18s, the 20s. And then when we get to the cask strengths, the that 14-year-old one really, I think, closed it off nicely for me. Mm. Yeah. One thing that I learned from this is that this is a beautifully crafted logical progression. Yeah. Um, that gets mm. lost because when you're at the grocery store or whatever looking for a different bottle, you don't you can't really compare, right? You don't know yeah. where things go and it makes total sense to me now. And then because of this drink through, I can finally appreciate the 25. I will say <laughs> I will say that I initially had like buyer's remorse even though I got a really great deal on it. I thought Man, is it is it really good? And then we and we had this on its own, and we we're like, is this better? Is this is this okay? I mean, is, does this make sense? It totally makes sense when you go through it like this. It is logical. It's rational. I love it. This completely makes sense. This is something that I learned. And I gotta say, I'm blown away. Actually, I disagree uh, with Dylan in that I don't think, I mean, I think the way we presented this was logical in how we explored it. But I think with what they were doing, they're really, I mean, I thought starting with the base, everything was an experiment. You know, I thought like, yeah, definitely this lineup, I mean, you know, experiment with the base. And then here it's more of experimentation in the age. Um, and so, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think the way, again, the way that we did it, there was a nice progress to it. But um, I think with what Glenn Livett was trying to do, everything was an experiment. So, yeah. All right. So interesting question to close this off for you guys. You know, we drank 14 bottles here. Is there a way you could kind of characterize this experience? Mm. Um, I'll, I think that in a lot of ways, the way I'll put it is this is, it's an education, right? This is going through school. This is your, your foundation, your foundational years in elementary high school. This is kind of moving on and getting specialized. 
-hmm. and trying experiments as you're getting more, maybe it's more like a scientific education, but that's kind of how it struck me. Yeah. I think I took Glenn Livett for granted. Uh, because it's so it, it's it's prevalent. It's so a, this is uh, you characterize it as not judging a book by its cover. Yeah, well, I mean, I used to drink a lot of Glenlivet, and then I, it kind of fell off because there's so many other distilleries to enjoy, and you get these experiences, and I just kind of wrote it off for a while. Mm. But now that I've gone through all of this, I respect it more. Yeah. I think there's definitely an amazing craftsmanship, mm. um, which is what I love and it and, and I enjoy. Part of the part of the um, the whiskey hunt experience is the you know trying to find that unique bottle, yeah. and it certainly provides a unique offering here. So that's that's kind of my thought. Agreed. Humbled, humbled. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking of an analogy. All right, guys, that's all the time we got. Mm. Jules, why don't you take us out of this episode? Tell us what you think in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up if you like this episode. Subscribe for more videos from Curiosity Public. Uh, also hit that bell icon to receive notifications when we have new videos uploaded. Check out our t-shirt shop. We got a link in the description down below. We are, uh, oh, also if you want to help the channel out, please consider joining Curiosity Private, which is our membership program on YouTube. Uh, check out our podcast. podcast? <laughs> Forgot the, that word. Uh, and all the major podcast platforms out there. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Stay curious. <laughs>